Hi guys, Rowland with Rollade's Bench. So here's the truth, in case you wondered. I'm an expert. Yeah, really, I'm an expert. Not a professional, but an expert. You see, an X is a has-been, and then a spurt is just a little drip under pressure. And that's about what I am. I'm just a has-been drip under pressure. So this is just a little few changes in the way I tested for you guys that said, hey, why did you let SenseUp be on some cameras, etc. Well, the reason I did is I took every camera to its top potential that I felt was the max potential that anyone would want to use hunting. That being said, I reshot a few more videos before I had to send the Watex back, and I shot everything with no SenseUp, including the N750 that I have here to test. So, in a little bit, you're going to see quick, just quick shots of darkness, no sense up, starlit night, two nights later, no moon. How do the cameras rate? Well, in general, I'm going to still say that the Watec 902 H2 Ultimate was the lowest on the pole. Then, the 97, N750. Then I would put the MC300. And then the EJ230, which is the mounts that I'm still got on it right now with the, from the scopeless. And then the other Watec, which I don't have, the new prototype 910HX. That, all that being said, there's more testing coming up on a couple different cameras in this range until the next Watec comes. Now take a look at the videos and tell me what you think. All right, again, starlit sky, no moon. Um, same test setup. We have the Watec 902H2. AGC is set to low. And I can't make out anything yet. There's a little Something going all the way up the range, heading out towards them trees that are out there. And they contrast against the, uh, the sky. And we can see some stars now. But very dark. Again, 902H2 Ultimate. Okay, we're out here tonight with a Pulsar N750. We're starting out with just total darkness and we're looking at the 15 yards. And we don't see anything. We're going to move up here with the scope and we're going to try to find something in the horizon. There we go. Um, got a little horizon. And since we're looking out that far, it is blurry. So I'll reach up here and get that focused in. The tree line at 600 yards. Um, without any IR and without um, adding in the sense up function, we don't see much of anything. Okay, here we are with on the starlit night, no moon, and we are using the MC300. Satisfy those that are curious, what is it like with no sense up? We're going off to sense up here. And now to be able to get a true comparison. We'll let it do its little save. And with no sense up, I can't read anything. I can barely tell where the signs are. Again, I've mentioned before, the noise pattern is just different on this camera. There's just a different, um, it's very likely the quality of the build, if it is the exact same CCD, and just the way that they constructed their their chip around it and the noise that they are allowing. Um, you know, there's, well, let me get the focus on them trees, but um, I 
again, it's just not it's not what the EJ was doing a little bit ago. Again, why I rated it a little lower. This is the EJ230, and we're just going to look up the range a little bit here with what can it pick up. There's the trees at 280. On out the far trees, far away, them laser in at 6. Again, on the monitor, I can uh, just make out the 25 and garage. Okay, since some have asked, we're going to go in here and turn sense up off. So you get an exact comparison of what is sense up in this it's doing for this sensor again we're still at f2.0 with no sense up and we're looking out over the range can't see a lot in that range at this point here's the tree line and so i would say that um Again, compared to the settings of the EJ230, which is set to the best and highest that it can be, um, this is a little darker. That being said, let's leave the sense up, up off still and open our aperture all the way up. So now that I've opened that up to a 1.3 with a 75mm lens, this is what I'm getting. Now I'm de definitely getting a decent improvement over the EJ230. And we're all the way up, star lit night, with sense up turned completely off. And as we get out there, let's just focus really quick. Um, so pretty decent little picture again though we're going to go back kind of to the range area you can see some of them signs on out there just barely and let's go back to exposure and turn since up on and let's go to two times for some that would say hey let's let's keep things from being too um, blurry so to speak um, all depending on how you're hunting with it. And then now let's go to four times. If you are just still spotting, um, this is just awesome. I mean, what it's giving us in detail, I still am impressed with anything I've tried, what it can, uh, what it can pick out of all of that. And the way that its chip, I'm going to say, is taking the noise and figuring out what's legit and what isn't. Is just better than any of the ones I've tried. We can bump sense up on up if you're again just spotting and you're holding really still. You got on a tripod, and um, if your game is being fairly still, now you, now you can see what the movement, how blurry sense up really is at that. But just for some fun, what does it do? And we hold really still and tweak our focus just a touch. You can read that 125 yard sign with no problem. And eight times, I can still read the 125 yard sign. Okay, so we're back. You've seen them for yourself. If none of you haven't visited, go to nightvisionforumuk.com. It's a great place with a lot of great guys that work together, argue a little, dispute, and all that together helps make a great place to learn about the latest and greatest, the cheap builds, the expensive builds, the high quality, the low quality, and a lot of things in between. There's more information than you'll ever read probably in your lifetime there. So again, thanks to all you guys that's inputted there. Hope this helps some people think a little further. I just wanted to share you some things, share with you some things. Wah, wah, wah. I just wanted to share with you 
what I've learned as I really wanted to nail down what was the top of the current top-end cameras. Take care, and we'll see you next time.